Hello everyone, and thank you to Alan and the TechWorks team for having me join this year's annual summit virtually. The pandemic is the main reason why I can't be there in person tonight, and while we all continue to face challenges on that front, I'm hopeful that scientific advances, like the ones that helped deliver the COVID-19 vaccines in record time, will help us reach better days in the near future. Many of these scientific achievements are being reached faster now thanks to advancements in AI-enabled technology. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes today talking about the progression we are seeing in ARM in the use of AI, from what we do internally as a business, uh, how we design our products, and to the fascinating end applications of the technology that are starting to emerge. Now, like many companies, and I'm sure all of you, we're using AI technologies inside the business to help us manage ourselves better, to understand market trends, to analyze the data that we get, and to drive efficiencies day to day. That's just something all businesses are going to have to do. Additionally, though, we're starting to see traction in the use of machine learning and AI in how our products and silicon chips generally are designed and verified. It's a fascinating trend. The EDA industry has adopted AI technologies to help with the optimization process of building a chip. Ordinarily, you do uh, optimization steps one after the other, but through the uh, ability to process large sets of data and use machine learning, uh, they're now able to optimize across multiple steps at once, and that produces a better result. So we're seeing great uh, benefits from using these new technologies. Also, inside ARM, what we do when we uh, design a microprocessor is run as many cycles as we possibly can, code sequences, uh, to verify that the processor does the right thing under all sets of conditions, and there's effectively an infinite set you can run. What we're finding though, through using machine learning, is we can work out which tests are most effective, and we can stop running the ones that really aren't effective or are just repetitive. And so through that, we're able to get much more efficiency out of our design. So these new technologies are helping us create higher quality products in less time, and as a, as a result of that, we can serve our partners better. These are fascinating advances in the use of AI, um, but there is so much more to come. Now, outside ARM, we're also seeing great use of AI at the endpoint. And by endpoint, what I mean are these tiny devices that are connected over some form of wireless connectivity to the network itself, to the internet. So these endpoint devices, these are the things that form the internet of things. Now, in all our processors, and especially the tiny ones that are in these IoT devices, we've been working on advancements in our core architecture to improve the performance of AI algorithms. We've also introduced dedicated AI processors that can sit alongside these tiny microprocessors and together provide a lot of processing capability. Now, these new products are just starting to come to market. Engineers are starting to experiment with them, and I expect great things from that. But meanwhile, innovators are using existing technologies in ways that I would have just never expected, and they're creating real impact. A great example is from a nonprofit organization called the Rainforest Connection. Now, what they are doing is they're trying to stop illegal deforestation, which is literally killing the planet. What they did was take old cell phones and repurpose them to turn them into sensors to listen out for the sounds of illegal logging. They take data off the microphone, they run an AI uh, algorithm locally, and they listen out for the sounds of chainsaws and motorbikes, because these are the telltale signs that someone is cutting down trees in a place that they shouldn't. Now, the Amazon rainforest is 5 million square kilometers, so it is clearly impractical to have people patrolling that, looking out for other people doing bad things. But by putting these devices high up in the trees where they can listen out to the sounds of bad things happening, uh, through this technology, they can alert the authorities and they can stop illegal uh, deforestation before it happens. It's fantastic what they're doing. Another great example comes from a competition that we ran at our recent annual developer conference. We put out the challenge for people to take all this modern technology that we've been creating and come up with sustainability ideas, things that can literally help save the planet. The winner came from an engineer in Bangalore who built a sensor product that he calls the Jewel Beetle that detects wildfires through the sense of smell. So he took a low cost development board equipped with some uh, gas sensors and by running an AI algorithm locally can work out if there is fire going on in the vicinity and again call for help. It's solar powered, it's very low cost, it can be deployed in large numbers across a very wide space and create, again, real impact. 
So these are, for me, our two great examples of how AI in these tiny devices, not in big supercomputers, can create impact and are becoming more intelligent all the time through the use of AI. But AI was born in high performance compute and right now it can be used to turbocharge our world's most complex research. As an example, Nvidia has recently announced Cambridge One, the UK's most powerful supercomputer, enabling this country's scientists and healthcare experts to use the combination of AI and simulation to accelerate critical healthcare research. They're not doing it alone. They've partnered with companies and organizations such as AstraZeneca, Oxford Nanopore, and King's College London to put both the hardware and the software modeling tools in the hands of researchers. Now, this isn't something that's just uh, for big companies. They're opening this up to healthcare startups as well because they want to fuel innovation and again, provide the tools that researchers need to do this groundbreaking work. It's really, really interesting. So AI is truly transformational, whether it's in high performance compute or down in the smallest, lowest cost microcontrollers. But like all technology, no one company can or will do it all on their own. Partnership and collaboration are vital. And this is why TechWorks is such an important pillar to foster innovation in the UK. The UK has a wealth of experience and expertise. And if we all work together, leveraging the convening platform that TechWorks provides, then we can amplify our efforts and create more opportunities for all of us. That's it from me. I just want to say thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and I hope I can be there in person next year. Thanks a lot.